Okay, so now we're going to look at the uh, ambiguous case of the law of signs for the SSA situation where we're given two sides and an angle that's not between them and talk about the case where you get two triangles. The uh, part one of this ambiguous case video was about situations where you get no triangle or one triangle. Here we're going to talk about the situation where you can get two triangles. As I mentioned in the last video, this occurs when the side A, the side that is opposite the angle you're given, is bigger than the height of your triangle, but is smaller than the other side you're given in. You're given in the problem. This side A, which is the opposite side, is bigger than H, because if it were smaller than H, you wouldn't have a triangle, but smaller than B. Okay? Under this circumstance, you get two triangles, and that means you have to do two separate sets of uh, calculations. Now, you may ask, where's that other triangle? I see the first triangle, but where's the second triangle? Well, I'm going to go ahead and erase my height so you can see it a little more clearly. But there is another way you could draw this sides A and B so that we don't change their lengths, we don't change um, the measure of angle A, but we can get a different triangle. Let me draw it for you. I'm going to do it in red. That side remains the same. It's this side that's going to change. Essentially what we're doing is we're swinging side A in instead of out. So that these two sides are actually the same length. Okay, so you can actually create a second triangle, a triangle that I've shown here in red, with the same exact sides A, B, and angle A. I haven't changed any of those three dimensions, but I've gotten two different triangles. And again, that's different than, and I'll draw, oops, just for clarification, I'm going to go ahead and draw for you on the outside here as best I can where the first oh that didn't work very well did it we'll just stick with the red and the black okay so that was the second triangle the black triangle that I drew to begin with was the big triangle the first triangle okay so what you need to do first is you need to look at the initial triangle that we drew. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to draw a triangle with the sides that I mentioned. So we're going to do a side-side angle triangle. Looks like this. Okay, I'm going to say that this angle here is 55 degrees and I'm going to say that this side here is 10 and this side is 9. Okay, I'm also going to draw in my height just for the moment. Here's a right angle. Let me go ahead and make this dotted so you realize it's not part of the actual triangle we're looking at. Okay. And remember that I can calculate the height by doing, um, and this was discussed on the last video, H equals B sine A. In other words, the sine of the angle, the sine of the angle times the side that is adjacent to it, the side that is not opposite. Okay, so in this case, that would be the height is 1 half 10 times the sine of 55 degrees. That's one half. Oh, there's no one half there. It's B sine A. Pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. He's making mistakes. 10 times the sine of 55 degrees. If you do that, you get a height of approximately 8.2. That's what your height turns out to be. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and write that in here just for the moment, but we're going to erase it real soon just to show you that the circumstance I have is the circumstance I talked about and that is 
that my side A, which is 9 in this case, this side is bigger than my height, 8.2, but smaller than the side that I'm given. Bigger than A is bigger than H, but smaller than B. Okay, does everybody see that? I hope. Okay, that tells us there's two triangles. Now we're going to ignore this height. Once we've determined that, we go ahead and solve it as, as we would any other law of sines problem. So what are we going to do? Well, we can't find this side down the bottom here, the missing side, without its opposite angle at the top. So what we're going to have to do first is find this angle right here. Now remember what I told you, if you're going to find an angle, it's better to put the signs on the top. So we're going to say the sine of 55 degrees over its opposite side, which is 9, is going to be equal to the sine of this angle we're looking for, x, over its opposite side, which is 10. Okay? Again, you can cross multiply or simply multiply by 10 here. Probably makes it easier. Okay, you get as an answer when you do the math 65.53 degrees. And I would recommend that you work that through on your own calculator to make sure you get that. Bearing in mind that the answer you get when you do this math right here is the sine of the angle, not the angle. So you're going to need to do second sine or inverse sine or arc sine on your calculator, which is using the second key or the shift key on your calculator along with that sine button. So let me erase this here so I can actually write in my angle measurement. Okay, so this angle here is 60, oops, 65.53 degrees. Once we have that angle, the top angle should be a fairly easy matter of just um, adding the two angles we've gotten together and then subtracting from 180. If you add my 55 degrees and my 65.53 degrees together, oh, what do you get? 120.53 degrees looks like. So this angle up top here, when we subtract that from 180, is 59.47 degrees. And then I hope you can see that it's just a matter of doing the law of sines one more time to find the side on the bottom. We'll call that side Y. How's that? Okay. And again, since we're using, since we're finding a side this time, I'm going to go ahead and put the sides on the top. So we're going to go back to the original information given in the problem. Don't use the 65.53 that we just calculated because it might be wrong and it's rounded. It's very, very important that you go back to the original, the original givens so you are less likely to make a mistake. So 9 over the sine of 55 equals y over the sine of 59.47 degrees. Cross multiply or simply multiply both sides by the sine of 59.47 degrees and y gives you a value of 9.46 to two decimal places. So there we go. There we go. So, you know what, that's kind of messy. Let me go ahead and, and rewrite this entire triangle so that you can actually see what the answers were. This is what we had. There we go. That's what we started with. And we had 55 degrees. We had 10. We had 9. We had 65.53 down here. We added together and subtracted from 180 to get my 59.47 for this angle. And we got 9.46 down here. It's almost an equilateral triangle, isn't it? Because each of these angles is very close to 60 degrees. 
Okay, but you should also be able to see, I hope, that the largest angle is opposite the largest side. The 65.53 is opposite the 10. The smallest angle, 55 degrees, is opposite the smallest side, 9. And the intermediate angle, 59.47 degrees, is opposite the intermediate side. Okay, so that is triangle number 1. We're not done because we've got a second triangle to do, believe it or not. So let's draw the second triangle. How did we say we found the second triangle? We flipped that side, that opposite side, in rather than out. So here we go. I'm going to do it in red for you. I'm going to move that side, that 9 side, in rather than out. So here's, here's my new side that's 9 units. Okay, so now I'm looking at this triangle here that's in red. This is my second triangle. Same 55 degree angle, same sides that are 10 and 9. But since I can swing it in rather than out, I get a second triangle. Please notice that these sides are exactly the same length, aren't they? Okay, now let's think about a little bit of geometry. You have to think back a bit here. Okay. What do you know about this triangle on the right-hand side here? See this triangle over here? I won't draw it in another color just because it'll get confusing. But I hope you can see that this triangle on the right-hand side here is an isosceles triangle. That's the one that has the two sides that are 9 and this bottom here. Okay, that's an isosceles triangle. And what do you know about an isosceles triangle? You know that this angle and this angle, those are the base angles, also have to be congruent, don't they? Right? So, what does that mean? That means that this angle over here is 65.53 degrees. Well, what does that tell us right away? Doesn't that tell us what this angle is right here? Sure it does, because those are two supplementary angles. If I subtract 65.53 degrees from 180, it'll give me this angle right here. And if I do that, you know what, let me redraw my small triangle. I'm going to redraw the small one. So if I take that isosceles triangle away, that's what I've got there, right? So what have I got here? I've got 55 degrees. And if I subtract 65.53 from 180, that means this angle right here is 114.47 degrees. Everyone see that? And then this becomes pretty easy, doesn't it, right here? That angle, all we have to do is add my two base angles there together, the 55 and the 114.47, add those together and subtract that sum from 180 degrees. Just rewriting that 9 because it wasn't clear. There we go. When we do that, we get 10.53 degrees here at the top. Now notice something. As long as we figured out this angle for our first triangle, it makes our second triangle much, much easier. There's not much more you have to do here because you get this ang you get the bottom angle by subtracting from 180 and you get the top angle from doing a 180 subtraction too. The only piece you actually have to do a calculation for is this bottom side right here. Okay, let's do that. Now again, we're finding a side, so we're going to put our sides on the top. And again, we start with the information we were given not information that we've already calculated. The information we were given in the problem that are, that are opposite pairs is 9, that side, is opposite the angle that's 55 degrees. And the side we're looking for is opposite the sine of 10.53 degrees. Right? If you solve that, I'll leave that to you. You can either cross multiply or you can multiply both sides. It's probably easier just to multiply both sides by the sine of 10.53 degrees. That's why it's a good thing to have the x on the top. Okay, you get 2.01 as the length of that third side. It's a pretty long process to do the two triangle case 
of the Law of Signs SSA. But there you go. All right. So we ended up with two triangles. This was triangle number two. And let me move back here. It's kind of messy, but it's there. Here's triangle number one. I wrote all over it, but there it is. So you had two triangles. Okay, and I should also point out to you, if I move this back up again, that we can do our triangle inequality theorem on this triangle that we just got. Okay, and you should be able to see, I'm talking about this triangle right here. Okay, you should be able to see that the smallest angle, which is the 10.53 degrees, is opposite the smallest side, 2.01. The middle angle, 55 degrees, is opposite the medium sized side, 9. And the largest side, 114.47 degrees, is opposite that largest side. Okay, that's your two triangle case for the Law of Signs SSA, the ambiguous case. Thanks.